Now we're ready to apply the next panel. So again, we're going to burnish both sides. Okay. 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 Once you've lined it up, then we're burnishing on the wall. Occasionally, you might have electrical hardware sticking out from the wall, or there'll be an item that you have to work the stencil around.
Just like the other stencil, we're going to remove the transfer tape off and reveal the stencil pattern. will bleed out past the end, so then you cut off the excess stencil. Anyway, There's areas when it's when you're uh, lining up panels that you need to touch up as you go. So right here. We're going to look through and then take the razor blade and just kind of trim off some areas to make it all even. You want to do this before you plaster so it has a nice clean look. Work your way down the joint just to make sure it all looks nice and clean. There might be an occasion that you need to create your own stencil to piece it. We pulled off this piece by accident, so you just look and see. There's a hole there. He's going to line it up and recreate it with masking tape. tight enough that you see the stencil in between. You don't want to lose the stencil. If you put it on too heavy, then you'll lose the design underneath.
we burnished um, before we're putting on the plaster was to make sure that all the edges are sealed down and tight to the plaster so that when you trowel the material on tight over the stencil it doesn't bleed underneath damaging the image. If you had to cut around an area then you'll need to pull the material nice and tight right up to the edge. The product's also sandable, so if you left a ridge that you don't, an undesirable ridge, you can sand it in, be, in between coats. Not necessary to sand the whole stencil, just if there's an area that you don't like. You can lightly sand with some 320 grit sandpaper. So now he's going around checking if he left any ridges anywhere and flattening them out. And then we'll let the product dry. Okay, so our first coat is dry. Um, here the weather was a little bit warm, so it's been drying for about an hour. Sometimes it might take two hours if you're in more moist weather, but you want it to look nice and dry before you put the next coat on. So they're troweling a second tight coat using kind of a random pattern, making sure all the areas are 100% covered. Again, you want this coat to be thin enough that you still can read the stencil through. The second coat, when put on tight, allows the material to model quite a bit more than the first coat. And that's what you want to see in the pattern once we take the vinyl stencil off. The wall's completely troweled now, but now they're going to look over the wall and make sure there's no areas where they left a ridge or a, a heavy amount of material and they'll trowel it nice and flat, making sure there's any, that all areas are covered completely. Now we've already put the second coat on, and it's been dry for probably about 10 minutes. And now he's just lightly burnishing with the edge of his trowel. He's not putting a lot of pressure on there. You don't need a lot of pressure to polish up the marble plaster. So he's just polishing up the marble right now before it sets completely. It polishes 
a little bit easier in the fresh stage than it does when it's completely dry. So we're doing an initial burnish right now. Okay, after the second coat is completely dry, you can see that he's now he's burnishing with a completely flat, flat trowel, just rubbing it back and forth, burnishing, polishing up the marble. Before we take off the stencil, we want it as polished as possible. Occasionally you might see the plaster lift off the vinyl. That's going to be normal because it doesn't adhere um, completely to the vinyl. So that's fine. If you see the blistering on the white vinyl, it's okay. Okay, we've removed all the vinyl stencil. Before you're done, you want to make sure all any little bit of white is off. Um, if you wanted to polish it now, you still could. The flat trowel. If there's any areas that need a little bit more movement. But now the wall is done. Our stencil pulled out really clean, but in the case that you had a little bit of bleeding where it went underneath the stencil, take your picking tool and just gently scrape the material a little bit back and forth to remove the uh, Epica Spotolato off the background plaster. Okay, 
Okay, this concludes our demonstration of the exterior, exterior swirl pattern on the main body of the limestone finish for Cheesecake Factory. Thank you.